Howdy folks, Polly here. In my video today, I'm going to walk through the form and structure and all the details of a dramedy tension cue, a trap dramedy tension cue. I've had some messages and comments lately about asking with help with form. And so I'm going to walk through this cue. I'm going to open the kimono and share everything, the sounds, the themes, the effects. Uh, it's really not that complex. One of the things I've seen over the years is that new composers tend to try to do too much. So let me just play through this 90 seconds of dramedy and then we'll uh, get into some nitty gritty details. have it one minute and 38 seconds of tense trap dramedy and again this cue has been used in several shows uh i wrote this cue in 2019 so this cue is three plus years old very simple that's the most important thing it's got 12 tracks to it that's it there's not a lot of effects you'll see here so i'm going to walk through all of that i have no idea how long this video is going to take but i've been getting uh, requests for help and and transparency and cues and i'm happy to share that stuff by all means so uh, let's get rid of the mixer for now and let's look at some of the basics um so I've got the form kind of color coded here and it's it's really simple. It's eight bar or four bar sections. Uh, if you're counting at the tempo of 80 BPM, one, two, three, four. If you double that to 160, then it's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. But this is, I've got it this, this time in 80 BPM. So there's 16 notes for the melody instead of eight notes. Um, but let's kind of break it down. And, and, and how this works is real simple. I state my theme in the intro and then everything's together. I vary it. I introduce a new theme, I break it down, go back to that new theme, and then the big finish with all the guys playing. So uh, let's look at the first theme at the very beginning. So here's our music. We'll go from the beginning and just watch. This is in D minor. Okay, that's it. Two bar theme, that's the main thing. So what do we got here? D minor, so we got D, B flat, A. So that's the root to the flat six to the five. So that's a... Uh, uh, melodic minor. It's actually more of a mode because I got the flat two here, that E flat uh, before the root again. So this is really Locrian mode. Um, it's the flat six to five. It's the flat two to the one. The B flat to the A and the E flat to the D. So let's play it again. So what's that? What's the difference between the flat two and the, and the regular two? Let me, let me raise that up a second and we'll play it again. Da, 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 versus da, 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 da. I could have gone with that route, but I went with the flatted two. Now I brought the high hits, high hats, and some claps, and a build. So I've got some things I added. So the first two bars are just the theme. Hello, I'm the theme. And then let's add some layers here. I added the hi-hats. Hi-hats are a hugely important component in trap type music. So I added the uh, the hats. I started a white noise 
Uplifter from one of my favorite vendors out there, Cymatics. Huge fan. I have a whole bunch of their stuff. Cymatics creates fantastic sounds, samples, one shots, loops, etc. Um, and then I've got some percussion from Lethal, the Lethal Rompler. Lethal is a very underrated, I, th I think underappreciated soft synth that I've used for years. I've used it for percussion, for trap snares, for pizzicato strings and things of that sort. So um, let's break these down. What, what's I've got first the theme. Now I've also got, I bring in these hi-hats. I'm not hearing those hi-hats, not that right there. There they are. And then I got this percussion coming in as well. It's kind of a percussion slash snare or snap rim or something. And then we have this, uh, this white noise uplifter. Now, uh, there's noise, some call them swooshes, there's risers, there's uplifting, there's downlifting. This is a white noise patch. We're swelling, so it's an uplifter. If it goes the opposite direction, it's called a downlifter. So I've got this uplifter. I've added a fade to it. And then abrupt stop. So I've got an edit point here. I repeat the theme at the very end of that section. So the last four bars here, remove the solo, it's just. I forgot to show these, the uh, lethal snares. This is a tuned snare drum. Very, very basic. Tune snares. It's really a cool concept. I mean, snare drums in traditional music, they don't, you tune them to a single pitch and they stay that way. But in hip hop trap, adding tune snares, tune bass drums, etc., really does a lot of cool stuff. And it gives it a very signature trap sound. So again, and I build into that, that pause on beats three and four of the last measure before we start the big party. So again, the, the four measure intro, or the, four, the last two measures of the intro. That pause, everything stops except the melody. Very common. It's a breath. It's a musical phrase. You're saying, here, we're getting, getting ready to start something. I just finished my first phrase, my first thought. Let's get ready to rumble. So now I'm calling this the main theme. It's the first time that the bass and the drums kick in. <clears throat> so, by the way, the color coding I, I've got here, this is kind of a habit I've gotten into the past few months, where once, once you submit music, when you're ready to submit music to libraries, usually you have to submit a bunch of alternative mixes or alt mixes. And so very common mixes, there's the full mix, there's the bed, which means you take the melody of the main theme out, but there's also bass and drums only. There's mixes with no drums. So I've started color coding things. So all of my drums, all my percussive elephants are in red. My bass is always blue, B for bass. Then my melodic stuff is always in a purplish type color. So I can see quickly, is this melodic, harmonic, is this bass, is it percussion, etc. So in the main theme, again, four bars. I'm introducing the 808 bass. What's that sound like by itself? And it's a slide bass. It's not a single bass. It's just very, very trappy sound. And that should be uh, 808 Warfare. Yeah, there it is. This is, shout out to 808 Warfare. These guys are just fantastic. This has been my go-to 808, used on literally hundreds of tracks on TV. This is just a fantastic 808 library. I'll, if, I, if they're still out there, I'll put a link in the description. We've got a whole bunch of uh, bases I can choose from. All these things here, slide bases, regular bases, etc. But it's 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 my go to 808. Fantastic library. So we've gone from just the pluck theme and a couple of percussive elements <coughs> into everybody. We've got the bass, we bring in a pad to support the uh, the melody. What's the pad sound like by itself? That should be lethal, I think. Oh no, that's Nexus. It's been so long since I've looked at this thing. There's an older version of Nexus, so it doesn't even have the patches showing here. Because I've upgraded Nexus since then. Nexus is a fantastic synth. 
but it's just a straightforward pad. We're adding something underneath uh, to pad the music. So main pluck, it's the same thing as the first four bars. The pad gives some thickness, the bass gives the fatness, and then the full drum kit kicks in. So if I just highlight the uh, drums themselves, Now that percussion you're hearing, get rid of the solo here, the percussion, that's a lethal patch, I'll put it lethal here. And that is trap, you know, usually here, percussion and drums. Uh, usually it's effects, there it is, effects. It's just a bunch of different sounds. If I go chromatically. It's a full keyboard of sounds, and there's a couple of different, there's four banks of those. And so what I do is I just kind of play it like a, like a drum, like a congo, a bongo, or a, or a, uh, you know. And then you can quantize it to the eighth or sixteenth note, and it just gives some nice additional texture. And I've probably got some pancake. Yeah, I do have pancake on that. So pancake is a fantastic, uh, Cable Guys thing where it's going to pan things up to the right. So let me solo that and play it for you. So it's panning. You see the orange lines left and right. There's different different settings and presets in here. Um, you can choose from it. You can create your own. All these different ways. But this kind of sends some things ping-ponging to give you some sonic variety. Now, it's really sparse. When I played it by itself, it didn't sound worth anything. But it's accenting or complementing the actual pulse we've got from the 808 bass, the kick drum, the melody, etc. If I take it out, put it back in. It's just subtle ear candy. But it's there, and if it's not there, you notice. And so a lot of music, trap, hip hop, R&B, EDM, future bass, they have tons of ear candy, little subtle things that just on their own are boring or seem useless. But when you throw them all together, it's like seasonings and all these little slight, a little bit of you know, cayenne, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic, all those little things add up to a really good flavor. So at the very end of this phrase, you hear this kind of weird, I guess, funny riser. Let me solo that. Here. It's just it's a build. It's like a crescendo into the next downbeat. So now I have the same main theme. These are exactly the same notes. But I made it very how so by adding a low pass or high pass filter. So I've got some automation here. I select the high cut, fre high cut frequency from my EQ for this particular track. So bring my track up. I've got it set that way. So if I go here, that low pass came well, then it slowly builds up. If I take that off, it's bright. Same thing, but I'm adding some sonic variety. And it keeps going and building. here in the third in the third uh, section the variation two so main theme variation one variation one is just me changing the EQ making the melody sound softer via eliminating the high frequencies um, I also added some troop some tuned trap snares as well we'll get that in a second uh, but variation one all these things here are the same the same theme you see the same exact notes there's nothing different I created this thing and then I just copied it over and copied it over and copied it over it's the same exact thing. And then this the second theme here, variation two, I'm adding a slight counter melody. But let me go back for a second to look at what I changed in the variation one. Main theme here, pluck, pad, all the full beat come to the variation one. How did I vary it? Again, I modified the EQ of the main melody, and then I added these little trap snares. And what do those sound like? Let's take a listen. Let's, uh, listen. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a high snare. So pull that solo mode out. So I dropped the vocal pad, added the trap snares, and that's a variation. Same thing, nothing new. And now the third uh, section, the variation two, I introduced a new theme. I still got my percussion. I added uh, the kick drum to come back in. What's that second theme? Nothing crazy. It's the root flat two to one. <coughs> Staying in the same key. It's just a slight uh, complement, slightly different tonal pitch. If I just do these two together. That's it, just a simple additional theme. And that's gonna come back later. So we added a second theme. We haven't brought the pad back in yet. The, the, the tune snares are still there, the bass is still there. I added an actual kick drum now. Here it comes. That's very, very common in, in Trap to have the 808, which serves both as a kick and a bass, but then an actual kick to work together with them. <coughs> So the kick plus the 808 kick. And then I've got a Donald Lifter. I mentioned Donald Lifters before. That's right here. Is there a place for a crash cymbal? It lasts a little longer. I also added some snaps from uh, oh, Echo Soundworks. It's a snap merge with a snare. Then I introduce a new theme. We're dropping the main theme now, the main plux. That's going away. We're going to do a new theme. So I got a new color. That's blue. So this next section here, theme two. Sometimes logic gets weird, and when I just highlight one section, I just want to see one score, and there it is, finally. Flat six, flat two. Again, we're in D minor, but instead of starting on the root, like I did earlier, I'm starting on the minor third now, that F. A lot of half steps. Trap music is often very chromatic, lots of half steps. F to E is a half step, A to B flat is a half step, E flat to D is a half step. So it's a totally new theme. I dropped the 808 bass out, uh, the, the pad is back in, but my, my kick drums, my hi-hats, those are all gone. The snaps, this is just kind of a, a, a semi-breakdown section, but it's, it's we're calming things down for a bit. And then there's an actual breakdown coming up. And the bass got real simple. It's just a downbeat. I can join those up now. Instead of the the full bass, this is just this downbeat, keeping that bass foundation, but it's slowing down. The snare comes in there. Percussion comes back in. And now we're bringing almost everybody back. We've got, we've got <clears throat> all the percussions back. The bass is full again. We got our pad. We got our second theme still there. Uh, so we're building attention. I mean, we started, we started with an intro. We did the main theme here. Then we did two variations of the main theme. Started a new theme. 
and then broke it down for a minute, break it down. Then, okay, come back in with that second team. And then now everybody, everybody in the pool, it's time for the big finale. And that's everything. So back for the breakdown. Simple bass, no melodies at all. Set up the snare screen. You have to have something to show motion. Back to theme two. That's right here. Stinger ending. There's a fade, there's a ring out, the bass, the 808 bass rings out. Now I could do an actual manual fade sooner than that if I wanted to, <clears throat> but everything's together. So if, for the first time, theme one, theme two, theme three, we could say, or counter melody, bass, kick, other uh, kick one, uh, percussion. I could rename those, those are actually percussion. Perk. Uh, hi-hats, very, very important, snaps in there. And, and that's really it, it's super simple. There's not a lot musically going on in here. This is not Beethoven. This is not Hans Zimmer. This is pretty straightforward, simple stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the, the mixer. Okay, so there's not a lot of effects going on either. Of course, I got EQ, cleaning everything up. You wanna get rid of all that mud, so you wanna chop off all the low end in anything that's not a low end instrument. A lot of times instruments like snare drums or other things since may have some waveforms that show up. So let's look at this pit one pluck, for example. Um. <coughs> this stuff down here around 200, I could, I suppose. I could do that if I wanted to. And again, I mixed this to make this three years ago. I have learned so much since three years that there's things I would change in here. Um, the mix, the sound, etc. But I'm going to clean that stuff up. So I've got EQ on every track. Um, and then I've got the pancake, that left and right stuff uh, for the pluck. So I'm actually panning the pluck as well. Let's take a look at that one. got some reverb on that sucker too so this is going to bus two what is bus two let's get right right space designer large i've got it pretty wet and i'm rolling that bus two and that that, that channel this instrument this bit one pluck i got it up here if i take it away let's just do that for a second let's turn it off that's the sound by itself being panned Okay. Uh, what else we have here going on in the uh, the mixer here? So we got EQ. I got panning going on. Now let's see. Did I? I don't have pancake on the vocal pad because that's just a pad. Uh, let's see here in bar thirteen. I've got pluck two going on. I've got pancake. Do I have them the same? I think I had them the same. Let me pull a pancake on the first one and see if they're exactly the same. Yeah, surprising. That's one of the things I've done differently since then. I probably would have offset this. So they're not exactly the same. The vocal pad, I've also got reverb going on with the bus too. I got going to the bus one. Bus one is also a space designer, a much shorter. This is 1.3 seconds versus the 6.6 .6 seconds on bus two. And what I got there, I got the pad going there. So I didn't want as much reverb on the pad uh, for bus one. Oh, here we no bus one. That's bus two. Bus one, this is the hats. So I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to the hats. Uh, bus one, I've got here the kick drum. So the kick, the perk, uh, they're going to bus one. So the percussion elements that I'm giving reverb, I'm giving them a much shorter reverb because I don't want that really messy and just giving a little presence or brightness to that. Um, and now let's look at the uh, the master bus, actually. And two of these things, well, one of these things has nothing to do with the actual final sound. Uh, tonal balance, I'm a big fan of uh, isotope, uh, ozone, and the whole suite of stuff that they've got there. So let me go back to the big finish. 
and uh, focus on that for a second. So this mix is a little bass heavy. You can see a zero to 200 hertz, a little high. But the goal with this tool here, the goal of tone balance control is to display where is the frequency map of your music and is it in a good spectrum for TV. And this this blueish grayish area is kind of the uh, suggested profile for where songs should be. So you want to EQ your stuff so that it's fitting. So I probably could just bring down the bass of the hair if you think so. But it's fat enough. And hey, it's getting place, so that's fine with me. That doesn't alter the signal at all. That's just a report on what the signal is doing. Um, I start at the top of my mastering chain. My mastering chain always starts out with an EQ. And I want to probably, you know, get rid of some low end and some high end. But I'm using a final mix preset within the standard EQ of Logic. It's dropping some lows and raising some highs. So it's taking care of my first. Followed by a compressor. Usually it's a standard tape compression. Uh, my user default is, this is again a little stock logic compressor, the user default is usually the Compressor Tools uh, Platinum Analog Tape. And that's always my go-to for starting. Now there's, I'll change it, I'll change settings, I'll change different uh, compressors, etc. But this is the one I go to forever. So EQ to get rid of the low end and spend a high end and then send it all to a compressor to kind of level the mix out. And then I'll go to Ozone. And then I will just see, you know, what to do. And now again, I did this this one three years ago. I use Ozone a little differently now. Uh, I think I just took a stock preset here. Uh, I did not do anything special, but I'm now using um, uh, Ozone to help set my output levels to negative ten lufs. Um, but and often I will use Ozone. I'll use the mastering assistant to say, hey, let's clean this mix up. So you know, just for grins. For chucks and giggles, let's take a look at this. Uh, when you use uh, Mastering Assistant in Ozone, you've got to find the busiest place in your track, and then you analyze it. Now, it asks you about your target, so I like when the CD section because it lets me choose between low, medium, and high. Let's, I'm just going to go with the medium density, uh, intensity, and let's uh, do an X, and let's see if I don't blow up my computer since I'm recording audio because Ozone, ozone is, can be CPU intensive, and I've got an eight-year-old Mac. So I'm going to say next. Waiting for you to play. I will play. Now it says, okay, here's what I've done. Uh, you want to accept these changes or cancel? I'm going to accept those. Now let's take a look and see what it's doing. See if the compressor is kicking in here in the light mode. It did some EQ stuff. It did modify the EQ. It added these points to it. So this is all stuff that the isotope uh, ozone figured out on its own. It said, hey, you're kind of heavy in the base. Drop the base. Hey, uh, 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 EQ. Sound like first this without. This is it's not as loud. It's just fuller. It kicks stronger. So I think what Oz uh, uh, I zone ozone has done is kind of gotten rid of some conflicting frequencies. It's boosted some things here. It's pulled some other stuff down to, to get rid of that mud. Because what is sonic mud? It's when multiple instruments in the same frequency range fight each other and they cancel each other out and, you, and it sounds sonically dull. So shoot, I'll just, I'll just keep that. Boom. Done. Um, <clears throat> and then the limiter comes in. Uh, I'm using the limiter. Again, this is three years ago. I was using the limiter to crank up my levels. So if I play, I'll play without the limiter. And you see, I'm at negative point, at 0 0.3, which is just below peaking out. It's fatter now. I'm just at negative point 0.1. So the 
limiter is, is helping me to increase signals, but half the little up it so I don't distort or peak out. But, you know, honestly speaking, since I did not run ozone originally, <coughs> and dry throat here, sorry, uh, I had the limiter to bring the volume up, but, you know, ozone did a good job of bringing that volume up by itself, so I may not need the limiter anymore. So mixing your master bus, EQ, final mastering type stuff, there's a whole science uh, in and of itself. Uh, but again, this is a very simple cue. 12 tracks, simple form, main theme, a variation, second theme, third theme, big finish, we're all done. Very simple, not a ton of effects, not a ton of processing. Um, and, and again, this cue has been used a ton. So I, you can see the screen, you can take a screenshot. Uh, feel free to, uh, you know, use this form for your own, um, you know, you know, cues, designs, etc. And this is just one way. I could pull up 10 more dramedy cues and they'd all look different. This is just one way to do it. But I wanted to show the thought process, the simplicity, intro, theme, variation, theme, breakdown, theme, finish, simple instrumentation, just a few melodic instruments, a big fat bass, a few percussion instruments, vary that stuff. It, you notice there's nothing that's the same anytime. Every eight or four bars every is different. This thing's different in every four bars. Adding and remo removing sounds so that the listener doesn't get bored or get tired. Okay. And again, writing for TV music, this stuff is supposed to be out of the way, underneath the dialogue, setting a mood, not garnering attention. It's setting the groundwork for someone else to get the attention, the actors and actresses, etc. Cool. I hope that was useful for you guys. Feel free to leave any comments or questions or requests or things you'd like me to cover in future videos. Please let folks know about the channel. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button if you're not doing that. I am just under 2,000 subscribers now, which is really cool for my small little fledgling channel here. Um, this is something I do for fun to help out the TV music uh, composer community. And as you see other videos, I sometimes go down other rabbit holes. Um, but uh, here's a video about TV production. So let folks know about the channel if you like it. And again, I wanna, this video was based on a request, uh, some questions and a request from other viewers. So if you want anything new, by all means, hit me up, message me, follow me on Instagram at Music, or drop a comment and I'll be happy to do what I can to create some new videos based on your needs. Thanks so much, so good luck and good composing.